So for the, the next assignment and the next set of assignments, we're actually going to get a data set, and we're going to do several things on that data set. Okay? We're actually going to construct a microbial genome, and then we're going to do some annotations on that microbial genome. And we're going to work on a bacterial pathogen called Klebsiella pneumoniae. So this is where we come into the story. Klebsiella pneumoniae, a really nasty bacteria, something that is resistant to all known antibiotics, um, something that is causing a lot of problems in hospitals, and we're trying to kind of understand that problem from a real genomic perspective, really get into what's going on. There was a study that was published a couple of years ago um, by Kat Holt and colleagues. Uh, Professor Holt is from the University of Melbourne in Australia and does a lot of work on trying to understand genomic epidemiology of bacterial pathogens. In this study, she was looking at Klebsiella. She's done amazing work looking at different salmonella outbreaks and other outbreaks in hospitals that cause big problems. And the, their approaches are similar, um, but for the next few weeks, I want to take a look at the data set that they used, that they generated for this particular study. Um, basically, their goal was to sequence about 300 genomes to try and understand what Klebsiella pneumoniae is and where it comes from. They have um, a lot of data associated with the genomes. And so, um, for example, they have a website where you can go and view all of the metadata associated with these particular genomes. And so the map here shows where all of the isolates came from around the world. And they have Klebsiella not only from humans, but they also have it from, um, from other places, from hospitals, but also from from cows and environmental isolates and a bunch of other um, locations. And as she almost always does, Kat Holt wrote a lovely um, blog post describing the key findings of their paper. And I encourage you to go and read that. But in case you don't read it, I'm going to summarize basically what they found um, in their work. The first thing they found was that when they looked at Klebsiella, it, they broke it actually down into three different um, species. And it was what we all considered one big species. There was Klebsiella pneumoniae, which is basically all of the clinical isolates, so all of the things that cause disease. They were really closely related to each other. Then there was a related strain that was a related species that was slightly different but didn't really cause clinical disease, and they called that Klebsiella quasi pneumoniae. And then a third species, which they've renamed Klebsiella varicola, which is associated with plants and is important. Uh, from a biotechnological point of view, because it can fix nitrogen. So when they sequenced these isolates, they did what we call a pan-genome study. And I'm going to talk about pan-genomes in another class. Basically, they try to figure out how many genes do all of Klebsiella contain. And they found that Klebsiella has more genes as a group than we do. Okay? So they're more complex than humans are, this group of pathogens that are causing us so much problem. They have more genes than humans. They looked at the virulence of Klebsiella, and they found a couple of really neat associations. The first association they found 
is that human disease is really affected a lot by iron acquisition. Now, we know this from a few other studies. The reason that your blood is red is because of iron, hemoglobin, right? So our bodies use that to take up oxygen. We have a lot of iron, and if there's iron available, we'll take it up and incorporate it into our blood. So our bodies, for other things other than us, like bacteria that are trying to cause us harm, our bodies are quite iron limited. And so iron acquisition is really important for bacteria to cause human disease. Another thing they found is that in cows, they have a disease called mastitis. It's a, usually an infection of um, the, the udder, where the cow produces milk. And in fact, for Klebsiella to cause disease in cows, they acquired a set of genes that allow them to utilize a sugar called lactose. Lactose is the primary sugar in milk, right? It's the primary component of milk. So if Klebsiella wants to cause a disease in cows around associated with milk production, it required some genes that allow it to grow on milk. And then the other thing they looked at, which is quite scary, is they looked at the acquisition of antibiotic resistance and they looked at the acquisition of genes. We call them virulence genes. You might call them nasty genes. So virulence means causing disease. Okay? And what they basically found is that there were two clouds of bacteria. There was a cloud of bacteria that acquired more and more and more antibiotic resistance genes. So they were becoming more and more resistant to all of the antibiotics. So these are the guys that are resistant to all known antibiotics. And then they found a cloud of bacteria that were acquiring more and more genes that allowed them to cause disease. And at the moment, so, so these guys down here can cause lots of disease. At the moment, this little area, let's call it the oh shit area, is quite small. But what we really don't want to have happen is that these guys that know how to cause a lot of disease acquire these genes that, are no, that allow them to be resistant to a lot of antibiotics. Right? And so by mining the genome sequences, we can figure these things out and we can keep monitoring this. We can keep seeing what happens as these bacteria evolve in hospitals, in the community, in other places, and try and understand what's going on. Is this spreading? Is it a problem? Is it something we really need to take positive action about?